under old business. We have council to appoint a new council president. available to you to move ahead with a consumer price index increase. I didn't know if you had additional questions or want me to go through that again. So I guess I have one just to make sure I didn't mm -hmm. miss read. I went through the, 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 the That little spreadsheet? Yeah, the little, <laughs> little spreadsheet. Um, I went through them and, and I, you know, we've um, typically been pretty averse to wanting to pass on price increases mm -hmm. because it, um, it increases the cost for, for the user users. And, um, and I, was, I was looking at it, particularly the option of, of passing along the CPI increase for, for this year as well as the one for last year, because last year the <coughs> um, I expected to see some pretty big increases, but these are like cents, so, you know, Dying to the month yeah. increases. Am I just reading that wrong, no. or is it really that small? It's that small, and it's because the the, uh, the rate structure is broken into a disposal component and a service component, and the service component is the only piece that the CPI is applicable, <coughs> and the disposal component only happens if King County increases disposal fee like they did January 1st of this year. So then, once we know what a CPI increase is or a disposal increase is, then we apply it only to that portion of the rate structure. So it is, it is small. It really is. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions from council? Council Member Walker? This is probably a question for many. We ask this every time. But what do we use the funds for when we're in the garbage fund now? Is it the 115? <coughs> balance of that account? Is that right? That's the administration. Does that go to the general fund or does that go to the garbage fund? General fund. <coughs> so garbage fund is the <coughs> and the only funds that can um, tax is basically it's coming out of the tax and the tax the only fund that has can tax is the general fund. Legally. So the, all your utility taxes go into the general fund. And we're budgeted for maintaining that. So if we, anything we take out of that is going to reduce revenue. The funding available for general fund purposes. Any other questions from council? Any questions from the audience? So I guess we've a motion. Yes, this is an action item. 
is an action item tonight. Did you guys need a decision yet? Yes. I'm going to approve the increase on housing. Is there a second? That would maintain the portion that the city waived last year.
getting out of here. Usually I <coughs> don't speak um, because I'm doing the videotape. And also I... Could you say your name? Oh, yes. Jean Fancher, 37248, 55th Avenue South. I live on the West Hill, but I'm in the city of Pacific. Um, I usually don't speak, but I would like to make a comment. Uh, the people who live across the street from me in the Federal Way Service Area are also waste management customers. And the Federal Way rate schedule includes freeze recycling cans for a slightly higher per can fee, depending on the size, 10, 20, 30 gallon cans. So I would speak in favor of this with a caveat that this council look at using the same negotiator federal way use for negotiating <coughs> waste management so that the recycling cans would not be an extra, what is it, set four five dollars a month and would be included in the basic household garbage can fee. And that way we could get more recycling, less garbage on the streets, and really lower the fees per residential can, <coughs> per residence because the recycling would be included. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? Other comments from So all of those in favor of the amendment? Aye. Your local match, and then 
uh, the additional funds of approximately $153,000 are grant funds which came to the city by uh, contingency uh, back in February of, of this year. So a grant was applied for originally, the grant was not accepted, <coughs> certain projects didn't move forward. Uh, basically, PSRC reconsidered what projects were still out there. This project came to the top of the list. So, contingency uh, funds were granted for, for this phase of the work. So, uh, this phase of the work has to be completely designed. So, we will take our design documents to 60% <coughs> complete. There is no right away funding or construction funding within uh, the project at this time. So. Uh, we in the process of getting this design we're done, we'll also be working with um, other local agencies looking forward to potential other grant opportunities for the city to pour the project along from, from this phase. Uh, <coughs> there'll be a couple other sub-consultants working with HBL on this project, uh, geotechnical engineer, traffic engineer, a cultural resources consultant, as well as a wetlands biologist, and, and a lot of those services are required with the SEPA NEPA process, which will be the uh, environmental process we go through in conjunction with the preliminary engineering. Uh, our schedule for this work <coughs> is to be engaged immediately after uh, if, if council choosing before tonight. If we start the work immediately, our schedule for completion of this phase would be about the end of March of next year, uh, March 2000 or April 2014. I'll any questions you might have this time. Uh, I know uh, members of the uh, public have looked at this and have had the same question that some council members have on the uh, uh, <coughs> fixed overhead rate of 200%. Seems a bit out of line at first, but I understand this is not something that you've cooked up. That is a standard state DOT formula that is, that is not overhead in the traditional sense. It's here's your actual labor cost and then here's your FICA, your unemployment, your health insurance all the actual costs on top of that? that that's correct, Council Member. Uh, and, and all of our sub-consultants, uh, excepting uh, the wetland biologist who's a single proprietor, all of the consultants must provide the same information. And that's correct, those audits are, are controlled completely by the state uh, for all consultants to work on federal and federal state projects. Any other questions from Council? Is there a motion? Move to approve resolution 2013-064. It's a uh, worthwhile project. It's a standard agreement with standard cost structure. So it's not like we're uh, giving away the store here. This is uh, the uh, reasonable and vetted and approved uh, process for doing it. Uh, we've got a graph for most of the cost on that, so uh, that's one of the things when I was on the table that I was, had been uh, working on, and I'm uh, happy to see that I was going to go ahead. And as far as the project itself, I just note, uh, is there anyone in the room who does not believe that West Valley needs to be improved? <laughs> you have got your answer. I remember last week you were talking about uh, coordinating outgoing out on some of the work that they've done and piggyback some of that, and that still looks like it. I guess let me put a phrase of question. It, that coordination, <coughs> if it goes well, will that does that have the possibility of bringing down some of these costs, or is that coordination already anticipated? In in what you have planned. That coordination in what we have planned and, and what the council member is talking about is essentially a, a regional approach to this project. The mayor has done some outreach with the mayor of Algona. Uh, we've also talked to WashDOT, uh, taking it off of WashDOT. And what we'd like to try to do is develop um, some, uh, I guess, a global approach with this between King County and Algona, uh, perhaps even Pierce County, uh, City Pacific. Eventually, perhaps gathering enough momentum to be able to talk directly with your legislative representatives. Um, and know it's a big undertaking. Maybe it's a it's a sort of a high milestone to reach. But I, I think our our goal would be to 
to uh, bring the visibility of this project higher. And this project, what I mean is, is really the stretch of, of West Valley Highway, not just in the reach associated with these improvements and design, if you will, but the entire reach from uh, the Pierce County portion, the uh, Pacific portion, and or King County outgoing portion of the road. So that's obviously a, a problem that needs to be fixed along the whole length, not just a, if you will, a island piece <coughs> of So that would be the focus moving forward. That stretch not only quickly deteriorating and heavily traveled, but it's also the evacuation route, right? That's correct. That's, that's the plan route to get up the hill. That's correct, and, and the city of Algona does have some improvements they'll be doing from First Avenue North uh, to the north, but there's a gap obviously between the end of their improvements and then the north terminus of <coughs> this proposed area, and of course then the Pierce County uh, piece as well. And there was a grant application submitted within the Pierce County reach of this roadway as well, uh, but that, that did not get uh, ranked as high in terms of the, the funding efforts. Any other questions from council? These standard agreements are typically over 100 pages long. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> this would be the hard copy. Yeah. Of this. Yes. And they're, they're very standard. I, I know that uh, there have been discussions internally in the city about changing some of the uh, language uh, within the body of washouts. They're, they're, they're standard. So. Any comments from the audience? Okay. Thank you. Gene Fancher, 372-486-55th Avenue South. Uh, I don't recall when all of you started on the council, but back in 2005 or six or seven, the city did acquire some sections <coughs> of the old interurban trail right of way along West Valley Highway, primarily from just north of uh, Pew, no, Valley Trucking and Equipment, John uh, Walsh's property. You can see that on the <coughs> ramp there by the big barn. Uh, and it goes up the hill and meets with the inner urban trail coming down from Edgewood. Edgewood's plan includes the bluff stations. And as I flipped through the uh, document, in the scope of work, I found some reference to uh, environmental studies along West Valley Highway between 3rd, which would be one route for the trail, and County Line. Um, but I didn't see any mention of the inner urban trail in there. Is the scope of work going to include um, any study or reference to the trail? Because the city did get some grants from King County. It is part of the inner urban regional trail system. and. Uh, in our pitch to both King County and Pierce County Conservation Futures, Pacific was a hub linking the other spokes of the inner urban trail. I wonder if that's been addressed. So, any time to do something? This particular agreement does not include any of those studies. However, we are aware uh, of that project and, and those particular grants, etc. So. There, there, and there will be some thing taking relative to everything we do relative to any impact to other projects. Um, one of which will be we'll have alignment studies as part of our design <coughs> for this stretch of road. So we, we've already spoken with staff. Uh, that was actually brought to my attention by Paul as well. So we've spoken to staff and we'll continue that collaboration as we move forward. Okay. Another question? I know I'm not a resident, but I just had a question. So this is only 60% design? <coughs> So <coughs> we're not going to get to construction with 60% design, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, that's correct. That's <laughs> correct. The, the the funding which was made available was you, you have you must complete a phase of of the project with the funding. You can't leave uh, the project at a, at a percentage which doesn't match the leg process. So the design would be 60% complete. Um, there would be sent to you a right away mapping and other things which would prepare us for that next stage, which would be um, final plans, estimate, uh, specifications to 100% along with right of acquisition and then the future, of course, construction. Okay. Any other comments from the audience? I have a question. Uh, Dwayne Graps, 122 3rd Avenue Northwest. Um, when I was looking at the draft version, it was just showing 
HBL doing administering of several consultants? Was there some final version that showed them doing 60% documents? Because I only saw a minimal effort on their part to administer the, I think there was three or four sub-consultants. Is there a, and is all of that covered by a grant? Whatever that magic number is. I think there was a summary sheet that only showed, didn't show the, I didn't see a summary sheet that showed all of the sub-consultant costs plus HBL's cost to administer them plus HBL's cost to do a certain 60% design. Is there another final version? Like what, is there a total cost somewhere? But there should be a summary that says X number of dollars somewhere, right? So, and you can answer the question over here right behind you. Yes, Mr. Kraft is correct. The, the draft omitted several exhibits. You do have an HBL scope for it. You also have a, uh, an overall spreadsheet, which is your 11 by 17 fold-out, uh, two pages, which, which includes, um, all of the breakdowns for, um, HBL costs, as well as the list of the sub-consultant costs. Uh, the total budget we show here for grant total is $199,701.94. That was, that was the total amount. So that is in your, uh, <coughs> agreement under, just, just after, uh, just after exhibit, it's within exhibit D2. Led by 17 after exhibit D2. Yeah, I don't it should be in the bound versions that were delivered to the Would you like to look at it afterwards? No, I was just curious because I saw, I didn't see a final summary of expenses. I only saw some time for HBL to administer the subconsultants, but I didn't see anything about uh, time to actually do the 60% documents. I figured it was a draft, there must be a final because the number was only 37,000. It's a 60% design based on my background. You're not getting there from what you have. <laughs> <laughs> no way. So I knew there was something still missing. I just wanted to make sure everybody saw that because I knew that was a much bigger number than what I saw in the draft now. Any other questions from the audience? Any further questions from council? Something that's like Gave my conversation with Dickie some time back and trying to check you if I'm wrong, but the monies that came to this grant and working with Sean, Big Eboff said he was working with him at the time, and that would, that whatever we needed to get to 60%, that would put us in line so we would be considered for additional funding for construction funds. This was our first phase that we had to do to be on in line to be considered for additional grant for the construction of the redoing of West Valley Highway. So this is why when we were about to lose some grants <coughs> over there, I got with Dick and, and he held that one off for us because if, if we had lost that, <coughs> we probably never got it back again. So if we never got that back again, then we could never be in line for construction. And uh, Council Member Steiger's correct. Uh, also, I want to indicate that, that uh, these funds need to be obligated between the city and the state uh, prior to August 1. That has been completed. So those funds are obligated, meaning uh, they will be available as long as we perform them in a timely manner, which which can our schedules to have our work completed on or about uh, next March, April. And so uh, you are correct. That this allows us to be in a better position to receive other grants. One of the challenges in the, both the grant applications that were submitted for West Valley Highway a year or so ago was that no design work had been done. So we were competing with projects that had done 30%, um, 60% designs and it's very, very competitive and very difficult to be competitive. So, so individually as a city that puts you in a position to be more competitive, I think our goal is though to reach beyond the limits 
of just the city and try to gather some additional momentum. Uh, the more signatures you have, your kind of applications with the variety of agencies, the stronger you are at the table. So, so with design, some work, design work done as well as hopefully some partnering agencies signing the dotted line together, uh, that gets us up the, the ranking process quite quite nicely. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what I want to add to it is that <coughs> we have Nikki Don, who is very hard working for our city, realizing that we have some definite need places and that we in the past probably <coughs> haven't been considered for some of these projects. And that's why he stuck in there with us and made sure that we still secured our funding and stuff for our valid our Milwaukee project. Mm -hmm. and, you know, stood up there and he uh, battled for us to make sure we didn't lose anything of the nationality study. So I think we need to try to <coughs> do what we need to do to back that man up so that that man can say this is what this is what they did that they had to do to get in these specific line orders. I have a question that probably can't be answered tonight um, except perhaps by Clint Steiger. Um, back in maybe 2004, John Walsh applied for a joint grant with was it Sumner in Algona. We thought it might, it, it should have been a sure thing. Anyway, um, I, I haven't looked for materials, but there may be a, a minor a minor treasure trove if they did um, pursue this to a certain extent. I know we were surprised we didn't get funding for it, so there may be something for you to draw from in in a box somewhere. So just just so you know, I'm uh, there are uh, and I did mention to Sean there are other some studies that have been done along there and some knowns that they might make their job a little bit easier at least to you know, send them off uh, or take them off a wild goose chase here and there. That's all. Thank you. Any other comments from council? I think that when we were working on that, I believe that there was some wastewater issues that came up and whatever, and for some reason, back in my mind, I think that we got tabled or something. There might be able to find more information on that, but there was a there was a storm <coughs> issue, whatever, because there was another entity involved in that besides the Pacific. Uh, there was a uh, a cable company putting fiber optics in uh, about the same time. And that's <coughs> the ones that did the work going up to the tank road. Um, I don't think there was any actual storm water issues um, involved there, but I was just new to the city at the time, so I was not was involved in that. Anyway. That's worth doing yeah. too much again, but I, I think we lost out on some this on the way. John maybe can do this information too. Okay. Any other comments from council? Okay, we'll call a council on resolution or <coughs> resolution 2013-064. Fred Walker? Aye. Don Jones? Aye. John Putnam? Aye. James McMahon? Aye. Terry Holgate? Aye. Chris Sider? Aye. Okay, motion carried. Thank you.